Are you on a budget and need to quench your thirst for good sound quality? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to turn this $70 preamp into a preamp that can compete with products 10 times its price by just tweaking a few simple things. Go ahead and destroy that like button and subscribe to the channel because we're going to dive into the FX Audio 203 Mark II. If this is your first time exploring my channel, I would like to welcome you and let you know that this is a great time to join my ecosystem. For those that are seasoned veterans, I am going to be doing things uh, a bit differently moving forward. I feel like a boring review and hearing me jibber jabber about a product is not enough. I want to immerse you into the product. I want you to learn about the company. I want you to leave my videos smarter and happier than when you first clicked on them. Let's go ahead and get started with this cheap tube amp from FX Audio. I have reviewed many FX Audio products in the past and have enjoyed them. Before I became obsessed with audio like I am today, I used a Tube 03, the predecessor to this, in my everyday setup as well as reference when reviewing speakers. So if you're just starting out, this is where I would put you if you're on a budget. FX Audio is in the Shenzhen Audio family, whom distributes dozens of different brands like SMSL, Cord, Topping, Astel and Kern, just to name a few, in this large e-commerce platform. They provided me with the FX Audio Tube 03 Mark II for review and experimentation. Let's start off by covering the features of this little preamp. The first thing they upgraded on the Mark II is the Bluetooth 5.0 feature. Not something that is of value to me since I don't normally use Bluetooth. However, if you want to use this in the garage or your man cave and want your buddies to hook up to your system, this feature makes it simple to make your system communal for everyone. FX Audio paired this preamp with a QCC 3008 Bluetooth chip and an ESS 9023 DAC chip. Personally, I was hoping they would have thrown the 32-bit 9018 chip in there. However, the 24-bit 9023 isn't terrible. It's just Sabre's entry level and cheapest offering. I suppose it kept costs low and that's really what we're looking for here, the most value for your purchase. Another upgrade from the first iteration of this unit is a headphone amplifier. The headphone amp connects with a three and a half millimeter jack. As you can see in the visual, power output is listed. I am intrigued to see how it performs against my shit audio, Jutenheim, which I will be reporting on this comparison later in the video. FX Audio kept the GE5654 tubes, which are replaceable. As I did in my previous videos, I am going to be showing you step by step how to replace them and different options you can use. I will be giving you a ton of links in the description below so you can check them all out. Swapping out the tubes can add a completely different sound signature altogether. It is quite interesting. I suggest buying several pairs of new old stock tubes and see which one fits your listening style best. Along with the replaceable tubes, it also has replaceable op amps. The one it comes with is kind of entry level as well. I suggest finding one that fits your budget. I just actually placed an order to replace all these op amps with Muses Zero Two, which run around $50 each. However, the small investment is the element that will take this preamp to that 10 times price I claim I made earlier. I wasn't bullshitting either. These op amps make a serious audible difference and it's such a simple process to switch out. I will also be showing you how to do this later in the video. On the boards, the power supply circuit is separated from the other components. This segregation from the rest will reduce unnecessary noise. However, I'm gonna be using an iFi iPower power supply specifically made to have the lowest noise floor out there. Killing the noise is important to me, so I am covering all the bases, including elevating the unit using these super <laughs> sliders to minimize the jitter and any other crap that can cause a lesser listening experience. Call me paranoid, but better safe than sorry. I'm keeping this as inexpensive as I can, so I wanna show you the, these easy tweaks that don't cost much money but can really help you out with your listening experience. The aesthetics for this unit stayed the same. The front of the unit has tone control, which is cool with me, a huge volume knob, and a on and off button, as well as a line out for your headphones. In the rear, they kept it simple once again with just an RCA in and RCA out. Using a nice DAC like the Topping E30 with your source should prove, I think, quite nice. Um, just wanted to give you a little visual of the unit itself. It uh, looks like it's a little bit longer than the original, 
but in the back, as you can see, they have the antenna for the Bluetooth. It has the RCA ins, RCA outs, and the, for the power supply. Um, it does use a 12 volt power supply, and I've already ordered one through iFi, so I'm good there. Your tubes are gonna be um, seated right there in the center, and like I said before, there's a little bit of a tactile feel to the volume knob. Um, the, the bass and treble knobs are smooth, and you got yourself a on and off switch. Now, the cover itself is an aluminum, uh, really nice brushed aluminum. Um, I think it's really sleek, really cool. I've always enjoyed FX Audio's aesthetics. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and open it up and see where we can start experimenting. Okay, guys, it's time to get inside of this uh, FX Audio Tube 03 Mark II. Um, as you can see, uh, with everything they give you, they give you the RCA cables, which, uh, you know, they're entry-level RCA cables, so if, if you need them for testing or whatever, uh, they're good to have around, but I'm going to be using something a little bit more uh, better built, you know. They give you warranty cards, uh, you know, a little guide to what's going on and how to put everything together but since we put together this together before in the past I don't think it's gonna I don't think it's gonna matter so let's go ahead and take it out uh, as I showed you in the clip earlier uh, it's a little bit longer than usual but just basically because it has a headphone amp and it has Bluetooth capabilities now the Bluetooth antenna is right here it's gonna plug into this but we're not gonna do that just yet because we're gonna go ahead and take it apart Comes with a power supply, uh, now 12 volt power supply. Now my good friends over at iFi, iFi Audio sent over the 12 volt iPower, which uh, reduces noise. And that's my main concern, is reducing noise and making sure that uh, this little guy is gonna have the least noise floor possible, you know? So uh, here are the little tubes that come with it, the 5654s. Actually, whoa, whoa, these are 5654Ws, which are actually higher quality than the regular 5654s by GE, so, whoa, this is this is a game changer. The 5654Ws are definitely better tubes, so I, I might actually really like them, even though I'm going to be comparing them. Uh, here is the matching tube. That actually makes me really happy. So I thought they were just going to give me, you know, run of the mill 5654s, which are fine, you know, fine entry level tubes. But that, you know, they stepped their game up a little bit with that one, mainly because it's probably like almost double the price as the regular Tube 03. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, to get into it, I'm going to be using my trusty toolkit that I got off Amazon. I will be linking that in the description below. Uh, I love this toolkit. Honestly, it was meant for like uh, taking apart cell phones and stuff. So it has a lot of like cell phone trinkets and stuff like that. The one thing I do like are these plastic, uh, these these plastic uh, things that you use to, to grab stuff because uh, this thing can definitely pull out, uh, you know, electronics safely without having to ground yourself or anything like that. But we're just gonna be using our little screwdriver thing. Uh, normally they use Screws in the back. No, they okay. They used Allen's all around. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the right size. That comes off like that. Bada bing, bada boom, as you can see, and then it slides right off. Okay, what are we working with here? Okay, there we have the three op amps that I'm going to be replacing. I like the fact that they did separate the power over here so that way it doesn't, you know, it reduces noise and any kind of interference and stuff like that. However, I think this looks really good. Um, the board's very well put together. There's the back of the board if you wanted to see that. Um, I'm digging it. I like it. I think this is really good. I think they did a really good job. I'm curious why they used three op amps. I mean, they probably could have gotten away with two. However, we're gonna go ahead and replace all three op amps with Musa Zero Two, which is a, you know, it's like the Ferrari of op amps. 
So we'll see. I'm actually going to test it out how it is now. And then I'm also going to test it out once I replace the op amps and once I switch out tubes. However, like I said, these tubes are pretty good. So I'm not displeased with the tubes. However, I, I do like the different sound signatures that the uh, different tubes make. So that's something I'm definitely going to look into as well. So let's go ahead and put it back together. I'm going to listen to it the way it is. And then I'm going to go ahead and replace the op amps, which should be here later today. And then I'll listen to it the way that is. <laughs> and then I'll go ahead and give you guys my final thoughts on everything. Uh, I, I think this is going to be a good situation. Uh, you know, I might actually be using this for for lots of different purposes. We'll go ahead and uh, get that done and I will get back to you in just a sec. What's up, folks? So I finally got the Musa Zero 2 in the mail. Uh, and I'm excited to put them into the FX Audio Tube 03 Mark II. Now, what I did prior to any kind of modifications is I went ahead and did an REW test to see exactly where the SPL was and everything and frequency. I want to see if changing the op amp and changing the tubes will have a huge or if any kind of, you know, effect on the SPL. So let's get started. So we have to take this apart. I'm going to go ahead and unplug everything. And I just got done listening to it. So, and I'm using as reference, just to let you know, I'm using the SVS prime wireless, um, powered speakers because I didn't want to, I didn't want to have to drag an amplifier and all this other stuff over here. I wanted something simple and easy to use. That sounds good. And this is my go-to for all those things. So <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. Uh, once again, I'm gonna use my trusty toolkit to open this up. I'm gonna go ahead and unseat the 5654s, the G5654s it came with. I'm gonna be using the Mullard 8100s. I actually brought the other Tube Zero 03 out to see. Okay, here's a secret. <laughs> So I did a comparison between my, my old Tube Zero 03 that already has upgraded op amps, not with the Muses Zero 02, because I'm sure that'll even sound even better, but just with upgraded op amps and the Mullard M8100s, it sounded highly superior to the Mark II. So I'm curious to see exactly what the... I'm so excited right now. <laughs> I know my buddy Clay is excited too. He's been waiting for me to get these in the mail because he has been a huge help. I'm going to go ahead and link his YouTube in the description below. It's called Ram by Monkeys. He is a great guy, has great tutorials, stuff like that. So definitely check him out. Let's go ahead and get this opened up, guys. Okay, here we are. Here's the board. For those of you that want to check out how to replace an op amp, I'm going to leave that link right here where I replaced the FX op amps before. I'm going to go ahead and quickly do this because I do want to test out the uh, headphone amp because that's important to me too. But I'm going to test the headphone amp with the old op amp and then put in the new one and see if I can also see or hear any audible difference. And I'm so excited right now. So can't mess this part up. Got to be very careful with it. So let's go ahead and be very careful with it. All right, guys, it's that time in the review where I kind of give you my final thoughts and my, my takeaways and everything. So let's go ahead and talk about it stock. Stock, it comes in at about 70 bucks. Has the Bluetooth, has a headphone amp, and it has everything that the Tube, original Tube 03 had. It's a little bit longer than the Tube 03, as you can see. Uh, there you go, a little bit longer. Tad bit, tad bit wider. So, how did it sound? Stock, it sounded okay. I liked it. It had nice timber to it. It had a good bass, good treble. Overall, it did what it needed to do. With the Bluetooth, I wasn't really a huge fan, but then again, I'm not a huge fan of Bluetooth. I felt like running through my Pi-Fi and using the DAC on the Pi-Fi into the system, it sounded much, much better. However, having Bluetooth in this unit is a cool feature. Because like I said before, if you're out in the garage or anywhere in the house, you can convenience, right? Convenience. So the tubes it came with were GE 5654Ws, which are really cool tubes. Overall, it was cool. 
Uh, I tried the headphone amp with my periodic audio IEMs, and it did well. Did well. So, what happened when I upgraded it? <laughs> so I ordered the Muses Zero Two uh, op amps, which are about 50 bucks a piece with shipping. And I have a bunch of tubes, so the ones I thought suited them best were the Mullards, the Mullard M8100. Uh, they're English tubes. So combined with the Mullards and the new op amps, and I changed out three op amps, the one for the headphone amp, the one for the treble, one for the bass. And I gotta say, night and day, completely night and day. So we turned a $70, you know, preamp, tube preamp, into probably what I would pair up against $500 to $1,000 tube preamp. I know that's a bold statement, and a lot of you are gonna be, be, really? Yes, really, I liked it a lot. And I'll tell you where it shined the most, was the headphone amp. When you switch out the op amp on the headphone amp, it turns your headphones into something absolutely incredible. It gave them more life, more bass, just a finer treble. And when you paired it with speakers, which I did pair them with my SVS Prime Wireless, the bass was just punchier with that new op amp. It was just more precise. It delivered, it truly delivered. There is an audible difference. Now, I want you to check out this REW I did. I did a before and after. As you can see, not much of a difference. The op amp actually calmed down a couple of the peaks, and then there is a weird room knoll in the, in the middle there. However, it stayed pretty consistent. So that just goes to show that measurements don't show everything. Measurements don't show sound quality. Measurements just show what, what is the, the noise that's being put out from the speakers. So always take measurements with a grain of salt. They are important. I'm not gonna negate that. However, they're not everything. I still think your ears are the most important instrument and measurement tool you could possibly have within your arsenal. So do I recommend this? Yes. I recommend this for someone that's just starting out that wants to have that nice warm tube sound and not have to pay exorbitant amount of prices. So if you want to stay under, well, all in with tubes, new op amps, and the unit itself, you're looking at about 250 bucks, but you're going to get about $1,000 worth of sound out of it. And paired with that DIY amp that I did, you guys can check it out right here. I think that's a winning pair. So take it for what it is, guys. I had fun with it. I enjoyed it. I think the Muses Zero Two op amps definitely delivered. I was absolutely flabbergasted. I am gonna end up trying them out on my Tube Zero Three. Um, I might even buy more <laughs> op amps just to have you know these two little bad boys. Uh, I love them. I love these little FX Audio components because they're not expensive and they work really well and they're upgradable. And FX Audio created it that way. They boast it on their Amazon. They say, hey, here, try these tubes, try these op amps. It's upgradable, you know? They want you to do better, but they wanna provide you with a foundation that's not expensive. So this is a cool little DIY project that if you're getting into audio, this is what I recommend. So thank you guys for watching. If you haven't yet, check out my new group, Hi-Fi Audio Addiction. Check that out. I'm excited about it and I really want to connect with you guys on there. So join that group as well as if you're if you're cool and you want to have a beer sometime, join my Patreon. My Patreon is very important because it does feed this channel and it does provide me with the means to buy more stuff to review and to, you know, expand and grow. So definitely consider that as well. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you soon. Thank you.